certify, what is the certification, and so on, and all that kind of thing. So do things right. Not only producing things and so on and all that, but the post-harvest research, converting your foods, whatever produce, into products that can be sold and that are useful to people, that are eaten by people, to their standards. I mean, you take MTR food and so on. I mean, I was in Japan once, uh, some six, seven, eight years back, and Japan used to be, you know, I'm a Paka vegetarian, and there were no vegetarian food was very difficult, so I carried these MTR packets. Uh, they were very salty and so on, so I had to add something else to, to make them less salty and all that. I met the MTR manager, vice president, and I told him, look, he says oh, only 35% of the people complain about MTR products. I said, 35% is a lot, you're talking of six sigma, one in a million. And here is the guy who is happy that only 35% are, are complaining and 65%. I said the other 65% may, may, may have thrown it. So the quality of, of the foodstuffs and uh, this one, I think there has to be a revolution that has to take place in the food processing industry. And that will solve two problems. One is the food processing centers can be in the district headquarters. And that will create, it's a labor intensive manufacturing. That will create jobs for the people. And also it will save the so-called more than 30% of this. And if you can add nutrition and so on, it will re reduce the disease burden and so on. Let me, I'll, I'll try to, uh, try to uh, uh, close up in another 10 minutes, then we can, we can ask questions and all that. So basically the, the issue is that if you take the food supply chain, then you have to remove the intermediaries, make the food stuff so that you can process the food, like not the oranges. Mango pulp is the only one that you can make pulp. Mangoes are the only fruits that you can make pulp in India, not any other fruits. And if you look at the breakfast cereals in Japan and so on, you can take the, the banana and use the drying technique. Uh, you can take the fruits and then, uh, you know, uh, take them out of uh, the freezer or something and put it in the milk. Then there are food extraction. So you have to get into research into drying technologies and so on and take breakfast cereals and so on and all that kind of thing. So, but in all this, when you're uh, making the food processing, you should also remember the food habits of people. Because there are a lot of people like, uh, you know, Kellogg's and all that, they started their factories. And also Coke came up with uh, Coca-Cola and all that. They have to basically change their style of functioning in India and so on. So if you, if you learn your lessons carefully, I think there are a lot of opportunities uh, uh, for you guys and that. Yeah. I mean, this is the breakout food industry is possible. That is the summary of that. Creating awareness among farmers. That is a demand driven agriculture. That you produce whatever you can sell and seed to feed culture. So that your productivity increases. Relaxing regulatory hurdles on sale of agriculture produces like you have to barely sell, buy in agri mandis and so on. Reduce taxes on food items and creating laboratories for nutritious food products development and testing. Encouraging growth of strong food processing industry. Developing talent for rural supply chain management. That's where you guys come in. If you will again go for banks and then you know started giving loans to the farmers and then you know this kind of stuff, then uh, you know this won't happen. And developing IT-enabled distribution backbone. You know what happens in India is is that you take any village or any any particular center, you cannot have a warehouse for that particular village because you don't have the demand for that. So. You should have a what is called a shared distribution backbone where you use pharmaceuticals, you use FMCG, everything inside one, this one, in a district headquarters. And we have identified Shailaja does research on that. We have identified 120 such centers in India where 
you can actually keep those distribution and from there you can supply to uh, supply to various villages and, and, and so on. So, and also you can have an IT backbone. For example, all the government is, has released 10,000 crores uh, putting IT in the post office. And post offices can act as like cyber case right now. And, you know, because you have a bank account, you need not, don't have the credit card. You need not have to have the credit card. But post offices can order things like cell phones to, uh, to various kinds of things for you. This. They can act as a channel because they are a back as well as a delivery channel. So I, mean, I mentioned this to the secretary of the post office and they seem to be considering it. Now I would uh, just talk about uh, something else and then I'll leave that to the floor to open. That is integrate the small retailer into the organized retail stream. Now you can see the small retailer in the village, you know, and you have the big shopping malls. Now, there are lots of things that are produced in these villages. You know, I mean, near my village, there is one place where the women's saris, it's, a, it's an excellent place where you get the saris, this one. But they don't have the marketing. I mean, typical marketing he does is one fellow goes in a, in a bicycle and then Know, tries to sell it in the villages and all that. Why not, how can that fellows, those small fellows, can get integrated into the global value chains? Supposing you have small uh, manufacturers in various villages. You know, there is leather, there are people who <laughs> manufacture, who make saris, who make all this kurta pajamas, whatever, I mean this. And there are tilers all over and so on. So, supposing you teach them how to make quality products. And you have a contract, say, for something in with the Gap or, or whatever brand in the retailer in the United States, or to make winter coats or whatever is the one. All that you need is you can freeze the design. You have the tilers. Their skills are tiler skills. So you can use them to, to make these things and then export them to do this. Now, what, one thing you do is you have to finance them because they don't have the money. You have to give them designs. You have to give them the products to get the product game quality. You take toys, for example. I mean, there are a lot of toys uh, clusters in and around Hyderabad here. So, those, but they manufacture Rama, Krishna, and all that. But you know, supposing they, you tell them how to make Barbie dolls, they can make probably Barbie dolls. I mean, the advantage of Barbie or uh, Rama and Krishna is you can export them to uh, to the United States and so on. So, basically, the modern trends in toys, the modern trends in leather, the modern trends in clothing, those things you can make the design. You can finance them, you can supply them the proper raw materials to them. You, but you don't do any manufacturing. But you finance it, I mean, through banks and all that. And you take care of the quality control. So you manage it. So if I give you an order for, say, some kind of uh, uh, you know, color shirts, which casual wear uh, to, uh, to somebody in France, I want to sell, then, you know, you make the design with a French retailer. But then, you know, the, the yarn to everything, you know where to get them, the quality one. You know how to assess the quality. You know how much it costs. You know each of this, so you have their uh, particular capacity, which is uh, done for you. And then you make them and then sell it. So basically, you are providing them with some kind of uh, marketing uh, capability, which they don't have. They have basically product making skills. That's all. They don't have marketing capabilities. They don't have capabilities to connect with other people in that. If I'm, uh, you know, a, a tiler, I just do the tiling. That's all. Somebody comes to me, I do the tiling, but I don't do mass tiling. So if you have this kind of architecture in the villages, food processing industry, all the SME clusters can be converted into basically that's what it is. You know, in other words, you are doing the orchestration. 
I mean, there are lots of companies which does which does this in the in the market and so on. And there, one can do this. You know, you can supply to the local retail shops, or you can supply to global retail shops. But the idea is to use the skills that are available in the villages, in the rural areas, towards this. So. I mean, the issue what I'm making here is, is that uh, I mentioned that to, to summarize in the rural areas means what? I mean, their populations, you know, less educated, the infrastructure is weak, and, and so on, and all that kind of thing. All of us know what the, this one is. And the preoccupation is either agriculture or SMEs. But both themselves are very weak. That's because the producer makes 25% of the total, this one. So how do you actually increase that? How do you increase the margins that the, the actually the farmer makes? That's basically to reduce the intermediaries, to have food processing and so on. So those are the kinds of industries that, that you should get into the rural areas. The second thing is enlarge the distribution capabilities. Now you have warehouses, so now Food Corporation of India is the warehouses and half of them are uh, the rat field rather than uh, paddy field, right? So basically, they, those kind of things, you know, one has to care and then do it. I mean, this has to come through private entrepreneurship, not through government control. But the second thing is have industries. If you identify those skills, and uh, that are needed for a particular, this one, you want to make a leather, this one, I mean, instead of selling it in Hyderabad, a bit road, on the roadside, why not it uh, sold in uh, New York somewhere, in Macy's, if it is made to that quality. If you cannot make to that quality, can you, by training, get to that level? So, I think, you know, all this means that, uh, you know, two kinds of things are needed. Yeah, somebody working as an entrepreneur there and then uh, doing things and showing it. And second thing is, some kind of gurus like either Shankaracharya or Mahatma Gandhi who practice and preach. You know, people like me just preach. I don't practice it. Who practice and preach. I mean, I always ask one question. How many of us would have respected Mahatma Gandhi if he was giving all these lectures that he did in the 1940s, wearing a suit and, and tie and then giving the lectures with anybody? I mean, he's a great statesman by any this one. He was wearing the Angavastra and then going this one almost without any clothes. That's because he's representing the people that he is trying to reach. So I think there are all kinds of skills that are needed, managerial skills. I mean, in terms of communication, you should communication, manasa vacha karmana. You should communicate through your trust. You should communicate through your talk. You should communicate too, through your this one. I think all of you are in a good profession. I want to encourage you uh, to remain in this and don't get into some global supply chains. Be in rural supply chains, and it's a good one. You, it doesn't mean rural does not mean poor. If you are in a village, you make the same thing that you are making in Hyderabad. You are richer by at least 50 percent. In all, in terms of your quality of life, in terms of the items you can buy, and so on. So, it's not. I think you can make others rich while yourself, yourself making yourself rich. No, rich in terms of their minds, they're rich in terms of their value that they deliver to the society, rich in terms of their standard of living. So thanks very much for this opportunity. And if you have any questions, I'd be very glad to answer. In the recent times, we have seen that yeah, there is simply a food taste, food consumption factor of the population in India. In the urban areas, where the people are going to get like, uh, less calorie foods, and then uh, while a certain uh, section of the population is going towards these burgers, pizza, and like this, and uh, at the same time, there is a 
big chunk of the population <coughs> staying in the villages and the semi urban towns who needs uh, like as you were mentioning this kind of food courts in uh, singapore we can provide that section the home cooked food as in the last month i was in kerala a certain uh, section of the kerala population they don't take dinner in their houses they make it uh, outside so how we can go this way and can implement in this in uh, villa uh, small uh, small towns and the uh, 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 villages which are bigger in nature basically it's a culture issue i mean you make it a part of us the word that we should be and there is no I think you will see, for example, the daily wage workers, they are how much? 100 rupees a day? Yeah, let's say 60 rupees a day. And how many people are there who have to live on that 60 rupees? So you have to make, basically make a calculation. If you provide a food, if there are four members in that family, you provide them that 10 rupees for the whole day. Right? Uh, then I, th I think they will come and eat there. And if it is basically, you know, one example I can give you is the clean water supplied by Bayraju Foundation. You get eight liters for one rupee. Eight liters for one rupee. A lot of people have used it. And somebody was saying that because it is cheap, people think, uh, you know, it is all junk and then they use it. But a lot of people, my own family members, they told me by drinking that their health has improved because most of the coastal Andhra Pradesh has this uh, a problem about uh, you know bacterial infections. So those get reduced because you are drinking clean water. So, and here is the case where if you supply at, at 10 rupees or something per day and affordable food, then they, they should be able to do this one. I mean, like everything else, you should tailor to the, your population, your customers. Yeah. Sorry? Taste of consumers will be different. Yeah, actually, I mean, this is one thing that... Uh, uh, you know, taste of consumers is, uh, is something, I mean, if you're from other places in the East Godavari district, I know the taste of those people. Right, what these people eat, and uh, you provide uh, enough variety and so on. I, actually, and another thing, if I want uh, uh, something which I really want to be made, I better pay 100 rupees and then go to uh, uh, some other restaurant. And here it is like, you know, McDonald's or some other place where you have menu-driven, hygienic, cheap, affordable food. Don't call it cheap, affordable food. And you know, you get it at a price. I mean, you, if you want the taste and other kinds of things, go to another place. So, but uh, the standard adjacent becomes important in all this. Sir, you mentioned that only 2% of our food being processed. Where is the problem? The problem is of support infrastructure, the problem is of capacity, or there is a basic problem of attitude of the people, because even though uh, whatever they produce, they get sued. So a problem of limited budget, they don't want to. Is there what is your question again? Only two percent of food is being processed in our uh, country. So where is the problem? Where is the actually crucial problem? Where the support infrastructure is not there? If even if even if you put the machine, you don't have electricity. The problem is the government. The problem is the government and people. I think I think I don't think uh, you know uh, uh, food processing industry. Uh, why did it not take off is, is a big, big question. I mean, uh, uh, the government doesn't encourage this. I mean, you take food, fish and other kinds of things. I mean, it is applicable for uh, for fruits, vegetables, and other meat items as well. I mean, so basically the processed food is, is a big, this one. I mean, I don't know why it did not take off. I think the government should, should uh, do something there. In terms of uh, the, uh, in terms of providing the people some incentives, starting their factories and so on and all that. But there is no this one. I mean, even if uh, whatever is there is there in urban centers like Hyderabad, there's uh, all these uh, people, but not in the in the rural or district level areas. So the reasons are not known to me yet, but at least the fact is that, uh, and also you know I was. Uh, 
meeting this ICAR scientists and all that, Swaminathan. I told, tried to tell Swaminathan several times that he should emphasize on food processing. But again, he goes back to his seeds, weeds, and all that kind of thing. So basically, there seems to be some mindset in the agriculture scientists that uh, this one. But you should, you should look at the entire, entire life of a particular crop from starting from the farm or seed to the entire where it, where it gets into this. Then, then it makes a lot of sense. But uh, also, you know, uh, people will tell me that, oh, Indians don't like uh, uh, processed food. And he was mentioning how many people in Bangalore eat out, how many people in your place eat out. I mean, it's the question of A, convenience, and B, affordability. A third, the availability. I mean, without providing anything, oh, people don't, uh, this one, I mean, this political talk is, is nonsense. And most of these uh, uh, things are, you know, either Panchayat Raj is, is involved or politicians are involved. Uh, then that's a big, uh, this one. And you get into this so-called public distribution system, which is, uh, you know, another nightmare. I think the day this government abolished this public distribution system, then, you know, that's the great day for India. Because I, I don't know who, uh, fellows who are being served by the public distribution system. So you mentioned about exploring international markets for rural products. So this is one uh, exciting idea and we have been toying with it for quite some time. Like we get a vague idea about what rural product can be processed at one end and then there are these international markets. But then how to explore when we don't even have resources, we don't have a solid idea like what product we have at ha hand and uh, how exactly to connect to international market? Because no, we you have should to talk to research. you should talk to VCs. I mean, there are lots of VCs who are interested uh, who are interested in, uh, uh, in in terms of agriculture and, uh, and and food industry, and USIBC, you know, United States India Business Council. They are interested in doing uh, food uh, food supply chain and so on. So basically, their markets and also they you know, they. The markets are not U.S. I mean, U.S. will be Indians in the U.S. But uh, I mean, the markets you should target like mass markets in, uh, you know, the the Muslims in Middle East. I mean, you need not have to uh, eat halal food to export halal food. Right. So basically, what are the standards and how do you actually certify hygienity, everything, hygiene food and so on. So. I think if you cannot search the net, you can get those people, and you can get get the uh, near uh, faculty support and so on. It's not very difficult to get a VC in this area. There are lots of people who are interested in this. <laughs>